This video is going to show you how to compare two independent groups using JASP. It's not going to show you how to do one specific test, for example, independent samples t-test, because JASP works in a slightly different way than programs such as SPSS. So we're going to, I'm going to show you how you can use JASP to run all different forms of tests that compare two independent groups. The data set we're looking at is a relatively straightforward one. We ask our participants if they like the country music musician Grand Parsons. So we've got a group of people who say no, they don't like Grand Parsons, and a group of people who say yes, and there's 30 in each group. We then do a series of tests with these participants. Um, we give them an IQ test, we give them a working memory test, both of these cases, higher scores mean better performance. And then we've also got a question whether they believe Grand Parsons should be in the Country Music Hall of Fame. Low scores mean no, higher scores mean yes, and that's scored on a 1 to 7 like it scale. We're going to do a series of tests to explore whether the extent to which people like Grand Parsons influences these three dependent variables. I'm using three dependent variables so I can show you the full functionality of JASP for doing this. So the first thing we're going to look at is whether people like Grant Parsons, if whether they have a higher or lower IQ than those who do not like Grant Parsons. To do this we go to t-tests and then independent samples t-tests. Although it says independent samples t-tests here it actually does a lot more than just a simple independent samples students t-test. So we click on this and then we get our nice JASP interface. It's very similar to an SPSS interface in this case. However, it's got a really nice um, user facing area here in order to give you a lot of different statistics and so on. So you can see the default here, it says test students. And that's just a standard t-test, but it's also got a tick for a Welch test and for a Man Whitney U test as well. And in fact, what I'm going to do to begin with is just untick that as well. The first thing we're going to look at, we're going to look at our assumption checks to actually see what type of these three tests we should actually do. Are we going to use a standard student's t-test? Should we use a Welch test when we do not have homogeneity variance? Or should we use our Man Whitney U if our data violates assumptions such as normal distribution and so on? So the first thing we're going to do is to tick our two assumption checks. You can see it, it remains completely blank. It gives us for our test of normality a Shapiro Wilk test to show a normal distribution. We'd want this to be non significant. And it also does our test of equality of variances. So this is Levine's test. SPSS will also produce this as default if you do an independent samples t test. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just look at IQ on its own. So we'll put our grouping variable whether people like Grand Parsons or not, and you can see it automatically says no and yes there, which splits our groups, and we're just going to look at IQ at the moment. So the t-test area remains blank at the moment because we haven't made a decision which of these tests we should use. So let's have a look for our first thing, our test of normality. And as you can see, in both of the conditions, IQ has a near normal distribution, the non-significance. So we do not deviate from normality. So we're not going to use our Man Whitney U test. And what about test for quality of variances, our Levine's test? Again, this is non significant. So this indicates that we do have a quality of error variances or homogeneity of variance. Therefore we can use our standard T test. So we tick student, so that's just a student T test, and then it gives us our T statistic, our degrees of freedom, and our P value. So based on this alone, we could write up our t-test in APA format. However, we should really ask for a few little different things before we start. Before we do this, we can ask for our descriptive statistics. So this gives us our mean for each group. So we can see the mean IQ for the Don't Like Grand Parsons group is 103.6, and the SD is 4.03, and the mean IQ for the like Grand Parsons group is 106.8 and the standard deviation of that is 4.82. Another way of looking at this would be to ask for our mean difference and that's the difference between our 
two means and there's the standard error of that difference as well and as you can see that's simply those two variables subtracted from each other they give us our mean difference and of course what is really important is we can get our effect size as well and this is one of the good things that JASP does, the SPSS doesn't this gives us our estimate of effect size as well and we've got a medium to large effect here another additional thing we could ask for if we wanted as well we could also get our confidence interval as well this is the confidence interval for the T statistic so we could also report our confidence intervals for this as well and we could just write it up accordingly simply write Grand Parsons fans had significantly higher IQ than non fans and then we report our T value along with its degrees of freedom, our p-value and its cones d. You'll notice on this write-up I haven't included the minuses here. It's because that's essentially a product of the way you've coded this variable here. I could have coded people who like Grand Parsons as 0 and people who don't like Grand Parsons as 1. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. All you need to make sure is when you're writing this up, it's very clear which fans had higher scores than the other ones. A descriptive statistics table similar would show this as well so that's showing you how to do an independent samples t-test but what if you don't have normal distribution or have a quality of variances well the process remains exactly the same so let's look at our working memory variable instead so we can look at working memory and now it automatically computes these and you can see our assumption checks okay we've got normality now we've violated the assumption of a quality of variances because our Levine's test is highly statistically significant so in this situation what we should be asking for is a Welch's t-test instead and then you can see we just got hit our Welch's t-statistic a degrees a Welch's degrees of freedom so it's different from what it would be if we had a t-test and our p-value as well we can still ask for the same thing so you can get our descriptive statistics so again working memory seems to be better in participants who like Grand Parsons and then the ones who don't like Grand Parsons. We can ask for our mean difference between our variables. And we can ask for our effect size as well. We get our Cohen's D. And we can, if we want, get our confidence interval for our Welch's T statistic as well, if we wish. And we just write these up accordingly again. And just simply say Grand Parsons found a significantly better work in memory than non fans. And then we tell the readers we've done a Welch's T test and we'd give our T statistic along with the degrees of freedom, our P value and our Cohen's D as well. You may wish to tell the reader why you've done well to T test. So you could just simply say something along the lines of due to Levine's test revealing data violated the assumption of equality of variances. And you could report those Levine statistics. Well to test was used to compare groups. So the reader actually knows what the process is and why he decided to report well to test. There are arguments that you should just always produce Welch's test because even if you don't violate the assumptions of homogeneity of variance or quality of error variances, it works just as well anyway. So there is the argument that you should always report it. So our last thing we're going to look at is Hall of Fame. So let's see whether there's a significant difference between groups and whether people think Graham Parsons should be put into the Country Music Hall of Fame. So if we look at our two assumption checks we've got here, well, first of all, if we look at our test for normality, we can see that in both the groups, the non-fans and the fans, neither show a normal distribution. So they both, because they're both statistically significant, this means that there's not a normal distribution in either condition. And it, again, if you look at quality of variances, we see exactly the same thing in as much as it, this is highly significant as well. So we violated this assumption. Of course, because the data is ordinal, you can make the argument that we should be using a man with EU test. Anyway, so to get our man with EU, we now know this is probably our best test to use. So we can tick that. And then we've got our man with EU statistic here and our p value. We can again, if we wanted to, you could ask for a mean difference between our two conditions. We can get our effect size as well, and we can get our confidence interval as well for our Man Whitney statistic. So, as you can see, there's a statistically significant difference between the conditions. We can get our descriptives. Of course, those Grand Parsons fans 
significantly more likely to advocate that Grant Parsons should be in the Country Music Hall of Fame than the non-fans. And um, we can see this is highly statistically significant. We've got a large Cohen's D effect size here as well. And we can just write this up accordingly. There is something that's worth pointing out before I do so. It says W here. That is a man Whitney U. It's a bit confusing this um, because you can also derive this p value using Wilcox and W. A man Whitney U and a Wilcox and W are pretty much the same thing, really. It's going to give you an exactly the same p value, but that is a man Whitney U statistic, not a Wilcox and W statistic. If you were to run this test in SPSS, and here's a little example here you'll note that you get 120 for the Man Whitney U statistic here. So the two two different pieces of software do converge to produce the same result. It's just a little bit confusing in JASP that it doesn't label it as a U. However, we can just write this up accordingly. Grand Parsons fans were significantly more likely to advocate that you should be in the Country Music Hall of Fame than non-fans and we report our man win and our p-value and we can give our Cohen's D as well for this. So I've gone through this using the assumption checks first. Um, if we just put in one of the IQ variable again just so you can see, you know we can get all possible options can appear at this point as well and you can see the only thing that really differs is the obviously the test statistics and the p-values differ a little bit but as you can see in this example these two are convergence but we get a very different one from Man Whitney for example. So we can ask for all these tests to appear at once but really we should be you know, using the appropriate one according to these assumption checks and then choosing our correct t-test otherwise you know there is I'm sure most people wouldn't do this but there could be a temptation to go well it's statistically significant when do this test but not the others so they report that test instead and you really should avoid any temptation or anything that may encourage that in any way.